question. Yeah. I, I, I want to. <laughs> okay. We... Um, I just wonder if you could talk a bit about uh, clairvoyancy, that is the seeming ability of individual minds in bodies to talk to individuals that are not in bodies. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just another mechanism in the awakening, but um, there, the mind is never in a body. Um, it never does go in. In other words, even when people have out-of-body experiences and they'll sit down and come to me and tell me their whole out-of-body experience and they went up to the room and then they went in the back room and all the different things and I say, well, you have to first have to believe you're in a body before you can even seem to have an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. Clairvoyance, remote viewing, astral projection, a lot of the things that parapsychology is, is filled with, um, these are all just symbols of, of mind. It's like the symbols the Holy Spirit is using to show that you're more than a body. Actually, it's, it's even, it's further than that. It's, it's not that you're more than a body, it's that you are a mind, always have been a mind, and we're, forever will be a mind. Not a mind in a body. Uh, that, uh, the mind never comes into form. Uh, the soul never incarnates. I mean, if you go deep enough, you'll start to see that reincarnation is actually impossible as well, that uh, the soul never comes into flesh, something that's so vast, never shrinks itself down. Those are just kind of little stepping stones that are part of religious beliefs. And those, if they strengthen your awareness of eternity, if they even send you in the direction of eternity, then they, they're serving very well. Um, recently, um, a friend of mine, Kirsten, she finally saw this movie that I saw many years ago called Eden, where there's a housewife, uh, I believe in Australia, who, who has a husband and two children, and the whole movie is about astral projection. She is off <laughs> in all kinds of realms, and her husband thinks she's kind of gone Looney Tunes, and the children are, I don't know what's happening with mom, She's doing a lot of first remote viewing and then she's doing a lot of astral projection and, and all kinds of different realms and everything and kind of the key is at the very end where she's kind of seemingly in a coma, uh, lying in a hospital bed in a coma and actually she's off in many, many realms in her mind and the big question is whether she's going to come back to her children and her husband or <laughs> just go forever off into more and more realms. So, in terms of uh, mediumship, for example, in clairvoyance, uh, I, was, I was just on uh, a radio show uh, in Ireland uh, not too long ago, and, and that was the first thing, are you kind of like a medium? <laughs> the, the guy interviewing me, I said, no, that's not, this, as far as talking to the dead or talking to those that have passed beyond and everything, it, I've passed way beyond those concepts. Those are just concepts that the Spirit can use to show that communication is, is beyond the body. It's like, far like, this, like this you mean? Like, uh, yeah. This is no different from us apparent, apparently sitting here now, apparently talking to one another. Yeah, yeah. It's, because I, I always thought it was as, as real as this world, but of course it's all illusion. But sometimes, you know, I won't lie, you know, I've had various experiences appear to happen to me. And I think I understand the purpose of it is, is for teaching. But then the idea I find quite disturbing that it's all a figment of my imagination. You know, if someone comes to visit me, you know, there's this sort of wanting to join with that individual. But if it's just kind of a figment of my... I don't have a problem with this figment of my imagination, you know. It's there, I can touch it and everything. Yeah, it's just that shows you how the ego makes categories. Like, these seem like they're real people, but... <laughs> and then we could talk about ghosts, that seems like a whole other realm, or the angels that visited Jenny, you know, oh, okay. I had a ghost too. And a ghost, a couple <laughs> angels, then these kind of people, they're marginal at most, and then there's ghosts, yeah, you know, some people see ghosts and aliens and, you know, UFOs and da 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 da. 
and alien abductions and so on and so forth. You know, it's, you have to get down underneath it to the belief system that made the whole thing up. When people talk to me, they'll talk about alien abductions, you know, I was taken up into, uh, you know, a UFO, into a spaceship and they tortured me and da 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 well, It's just another story. No different than listening to Aunt Edna talking about how they, you know, they tried to take her kidneys out and then they messed up there and they left a knife in the, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, okay. A horror story is a horror story, you know, it doesn't, I mean, I don't care about aliens, okay, tell me. It's just as interesting as the other ones, you know, a nightmare is a nightmare. It's, Jesus says, beware of the temptation that you can be unfairly treated. By aliens, by anybody, it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's, you start to see all the talk of the realms and, oh, this, this ego mind has got a big imagination, it goes far beyond earth, you know, it goes on and on and on. And then I hear about, you know, David Icke and conspiracies and so on and so forth. I remember Jason one time, he came from Canada and he was with me and we were driving and he said, I don't even know if I want to bring this up with you, David, because I'm afraid of what you're going to say, but he said, uh, I think this 9-11 thing that happened was a conspiracy. I, I think that, that we don't, you know, it was an inside job and so and so and so forth and this and this and this. And I said, well, so on the one hand, you're telling me it was an inside job, it was a conspiracy. Other people say it was terrorist. I said, uh, but those are the same. Uh, the two different causation things, two different form things, but those are identical. And he, he was like, you know, he was, he was afraid that I would try to defend that it was a terrorist attack or something uh, like some people do or so forth, but, but the whole point is to start to see, like the movie last night, like I was sharing the commentary there, it's, it's a dream. And we shouldn't get all hung up and caught up about which aspects of the dream are real or more real than other things, or to keep making degrees and gradations of, of the dream. You know, the, the miracle shows that the false is false. The miracle shows that there's no hierarchy of illusions, it's just all one illusion. Well, I, I guess I'd, I'd like to ask about denial in that case, because if you came up and talked to me, I wouldn't deny that you're in front of me as far as my experience goes. And if someone pops into your mind and appears to be trying to communicate with you, and a lot of conflict in just saying, it's not real, it's just a figment of my imagination, I don't want to put my trust into something like this, I mean, if it's as real as this world, I guess it's just the purpose you put to it, right? I'm sort of answering my own thing here. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, I'm not asking you to just affirm that it's all an illusion, because what you perceive through the body's eyes and what you perceive in the world, it, it, Jesus calls it, to deny the body is, is the inappropriate uh, use of denial. And so what he does say, he does also offer you the helpful use of denial, he says, deny the belief that error can hurt you. So, he's saying, don't, don't deny the body, because why? Because the body's still part of your experience. And you don't want to try to just completely wipe over and deny something that's part of your experience. But he is saying, watch your mind, watch your emotions. And if you have fear coming up uh, with whatever you're perceiving, deny the belief that error can hurt you. In other words, you're going to end up in so exposing the ego and seeing its nothingness that you will end up denying the ego and accepting the spirit. And so that's helpful. So, so if you say are sitting in your bed and some, some soul or image, uh, apparition, vision of something comes and is talking to you, then Sorry. yeah, you continue on with the interaction as you feel guided, if it's, you use it as a teaching learning opportunity, because you are always teaching yourself, and you would, you would offer gentleness and kindness, um, you might offer some love in the sense of go to the light, or you're innocent, 
uh, you, didn't, you know, you didn't do anything wrong, whatever the Spirit, Holy Spirit would teach through you and strengthen in awareness would continue on.